Greetings, gentlemen and ladies. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a powerful tool that is Nano Banana, Google's latest image editor. It's so powerful, so useful, so strong for e game development and character design. For example, let me let me get into this. Let me start by prefacing how this kind of could flow. For example, I was actually using Midjourney to generate up some beautiful uh, character designs, right? Midjourney does a really good job of coming up with really artistic stuff. So I've come up with this character. I'm like, that's a really cool character. You know what? I want to actually turn that into a 3D model using uh, some 3D model generation AI. Now, the problem with this model is, of course, it's wearing clothing. Uh, we're not standing in a T pose. There's a number of things that are going to make this difficult to transform into a 3D model. Uh, it, lighting and shadows, of course, are not, you know, so there's a few issues. Now, the powerful thing about Google's Nano Banana is just how strong it adheres to prompt adherence. So I've been using OpenArt uh, in order to access the many different image generation models out there. Nano Banana being available amongst that list, GPT Image, Flux Context. All of the imaging models are available by OpenArt, which is why I really like them. It's just a very flexible uh, image generation uh, website. Uh, so basically what I've done is I've uploaded my reference image, which I just finished showing you. So I'm going to grab my reference image right here. I'm going to upload that as my Omni reference and a couple of issues on this, like I say. So what I'm able to do now is I'm able to say, put this character facing the camera, standing in T pose. Now this is something that Nano Banana is able to do really well. For example, most image generation previously didn't understand what standing in t-pose was it didn't understand what facing the camera you know straight on was and for if you're doing modeling if you're doing ai generated modeling or classic old-fashioned manual modeling having those reference images from front side up down etc is a really useful thing uh, to be able to use a image generator to help come up with those four so i also say a few things like show full body put a gray background uh, remove flow and here's a, here's the important here's one of the important things I said remove the flowing clothing okay because flowing clothing looks great but it's not something that I necessarily want to embed into the character model I said leave only the armor on okay so now I'm going to generate up a few of these and actually I've already done these a couple of times and uh, you'll be able to see now in this case uh, I this was just before I said to put it uh, put the uh, the full body into the shot so we didn't quite get the full shot but full body but what you can see is that indeed we have that t pose facing the camera perfectly a neutral background we have the clothing removed i said remove the flowing clothing and it knew exactly <clears throat> how to do that um <clears throat> so you know with image generation it's always a, a few retries actually that's the uh that's the sexy version right there let's uh let's switch back to the armored version but uh, in addition, in addition to, uh, for example, uh, one issue I'm noticing here is the lighting, right? <clears throat> so my original concept art had really cool lighting, backlit lighting, which is great for concept art. So I could do something like um, uh, change the lighting to be from, from the front, right? So uh, when it comes to, like I say, generation with uh, Hyperhumans Rodin, for example, there's a few other ones like Meshi. Uh, you you kind of want to have the lighting be and the you know the the actual image look how you want the texturing to become right so in this case we had an issue with the lighting being sort of backlit sunset and I wanted it from the front so again Google banana a uh, Google banana nano banana Google's nano banana <clears throat> well here we here we do indeed have that nice front lighting now we're still struggling a little bit with getting that full body in the frame but now we do have that nice front on lighting right so that's actually pretty good if we had actually got managed to get the full frame of that now the, the small issue with this is that i've got a source image which is a portrait format and uh, i'm using a square generation format since that's the native format for nano banana uh, and i do find that when you use a source that's different a source size that's different than your intended size uh, it can sort of uh, not adhere perfectly. Like this is Nano Banana trying to work with the uh, difference in uh, resolutions. Now, OpenArt does allow you to select the mobile configuration even with Nano Banana, but I believe it does some sort of um, internal process where, I don't know, maybe it extends or expands using a different editor. I'm not exactly sure how it works because I don't think 
that the mobile setting is supported natively by Nano Banana at the moment. So I'm just, that's okay. I'm going to keep regenerating and, you know, adjusting the prompt a little bit. Make sure the full body is showing, right? Um, but I can also, again, using the image editing tool, if I want to, let's see, let's actually, are we getting pretty close here? Oh, did I not set? No, I did. Okay. So those are still portrait size, but I did set those back to, oh, I should set those back to square. That's right. I set it to auto size, so it's matching the source image. Um, again, I'm looking for nice lighting, but the point is that actually that's not bad. A little bit dim on the lighting still. Let's see. A little bit dim. Now, this is probably pretty good. Uh, so what I can actually do here, since I'm getting close and since I, I you know, I probably should have started with a with a with a source image that uh, was also of the square dimension in order to work with Nano Banana a little, a little easier. What I can do here though is using Open Arts image editing features, I can actually just go to expand. Uh, I'm going to switch that to uh, square size and I'm just going to let, yeah, leave it like a little bit bigger, right? So I'm pretty sure now what will happen is Nano Banana will look at the image. It'll say, okay, there's not enough space for the feet. The head's a little cut off. And now what it should probably do is, well, it, what it will likely try to do is complete that image, which will, you know, hopefully be as much as I need in order to um, complete the character, which I'm then going to bring over into Rodin, Hyperhumans Rodin, Hyperhuman, there we go, Hyperhumans Rodin, and we're going to actually generate up a model here today using my character concept uh, from, uh, yeah, just like, like I say, and that's such, just such the beautiful thing about Nano Banana. This is, uh, like I say, a, a feature, featurette on just how powerful Nano Banana's imaging, image editing abilities are. The ability to take, a you know, a source character and, uh, and, and let me, let me show you something else while we're, while we're waiting for this to generate. Uh, I could take my source character, uh, and I could start featuring it from different angles, right? So I could say, show this character from a side angle. Show this character uh, holding, holding two swords, right? Show this character um, wearing a uh, I don't know, <laughs> wearing a wearing a cape, right? And so you're able to take your base concept character and so quickly and easily. Now I should have probably specified exact side, not the isometric side. But uh, there's our character holding swords. There's our character in a cape. So you're able to iterate on your, you know, character design so easily and so. Um, accurately now with with nano banana actually I wasn't even using nano banana I was accidentally using flex context which is also really good but nano banana is actually even better let's see hold on let's let's try a couple more while we're waiting so okay popping back into the canvas editor here we go so now we've got our complete character uh, and she's got horns I actually like the horns the horns are cool that's actually pretty solid um, I think the shading and everything like that's not bad it's actually pretty good now, I kind of wanted to actually even see if I could improve that lighting a little bit more. So I'm going to actually grab this and go back into my image editor here. And I'm going to see. I'm just going to see. I'm, I'm always so curious about what you can, how you, how you can push the technology. So again, back to Nano Banana. Uh, and this time we have a nice square image to start. So we're not going to run into that sort of resolution conflict, squishy, trying to figure out what's going on. I'm going to say improve the lighting on this character so that there aren't, uh, let's call it baked in shadows. Maybe that's the right prompting. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But again, another nice thing about Nano, uh, OpenAI's ability to interface with Nano Banana. And by the way, you can use Nano Banana for free from the Gemini chat. But you can only do one image at a time. Nice thing about open art is you can just start generating up multiple images at the same time. So you don't have to wait as much time waiting for like a good variation 
or whatever. You just go iterate, 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 see which one comes up with the best lighting. And um, let's see. That one's actually not bad. You know what? I think I'm actually going to be happy with that one. That'll be pretty good for our purposes here. Now I'm going to actually grab this, head on over into Hyperhumans Rodin, and I'm going to select my character. Yeah, you can see the big improvement there, right? So there's our sh kind of shadowy version, and we just took the same pose, the same character, everything else basically identical, basically. But we've improved the lighting, right? We've improved the lighting so that the texturing that's automatically done with a uh, Hyper, Hyper 3D Rodin is going to be, is that, see, is it version 2 yet? Not quite. Coming soon. Oh, I'm excited for version 2. Anyway, let's generate up our model and uh, see what we get. Okay, so there's our preview, I think. Generally what you want to do when you check the preview is make sure there's no glaring issues. I also see, like to see if I can see that finger separation. That's going to be important for automatic rigging in a minute, but I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and hope for the best here. Oh, I am actually very happy with that. The uh, finger separation looks quite good, actually really good. Sometimes with the finger, and that's the nice thing about being at, what, what I found is when you're using Hyperhumans Rodin, if you go into that T-pose, I believe the modeling language or the AI language understands that usually there's going to be five fingers, right? Because it's probably trained on data that uses that T-pose, right? So... When you have a character that starts in T-Pose, which is why Nano Banana is so strong, so nice and useful, when you have a character that starts in T-Pose, I believe that Rodin understands more clearly that things like finger separation uh, are, you know, that there's meant to be this finger separation and, you know, five digits or four digits or how many, whatever, four fingers and a thumb. Um, that looks, I like that. That looks great. I think that looks really good. Uh, let's go ahead and generate up the... Does it have a face? I don't know if we want a face. No, I don't think we have a face here. I don't think we want to enhance the face. Let's see how our texture generation comes out. But um, yeah, like I say, the combination of being able to use Nano Banana to get your character into a position. And the, and the thing about this is we're, we're going to be automatically rigging this later in Blender with uh, automatic rigging. And if you have that nice clear finger separation, it really helps the fingers to get rigged up. If you don't have finger separation, you can always just, you know, use a single kind of mitten hand bone without with our articulated fingers. But it is really nice when you can get that uh, finger rigging as well. Okay, and there we have our textured model. Now that is not bad. Um, now this is not going to necessarily be your, you know, first person game hero character but uh you know you know the textures like i say they're they're pretty good but uh this is you know this would be great for the type of game which is maybe like a top-down isometric or whatever right where the where the perfection of textures isn't necessarily required um but even still even kind of like looking pretty close this is pretty freaking good um yeah i'm not unhappy with that at all uh, and yeah, I'm very excited to see as the technology develops just how good that. The, in my opinion, the main issue with um, creating really beautiful models with uh, AI generation these days, I'm going to get that 4K texture, FBX, and I'm only going to grab the shaded model here. I'm not really that good with PBR and texture, and I don't really fully understand it, to be perfectly honest. But uh, uh, the, the main thing that's going to make these models look really great, because the geometry, I think, is pretty good. Is uh is when the when the texture refinement really improves. Like I think we're going to start getting such beautiful generations just when that texturing process uh, improves. That's still pretty freaking good though. Like that's pretty good considering the source reference. That's good. Like that's pretty good. All right, let's hop over into Unreal Engine and play our character. My bad. Before we go into Unreal Engine, we actually have to fire up Blender and rig our character. Now I've got my character open. And I'm just going to be using the Easy Rig plugin to automatically rig up this character. Very quick, easy. I start by placing a neck, chin, shoulders, wrist, uh, pelvis, I guess, uh, and ankles. And then I go ahead and I detect where the bone placement should be. And there we have our skeleton. And like, I like to check the fingers. They look good. They look beautiful. 
and let's go ahead and match to rig and then what we're going to do is we're going to heat map skin bind weight paint automatically and uh, that looks like it's done and the last thing i like to do here <clears throat> is i like to go into pose mode and just check and make sure yeah that the geometry isn't weirdly pulling where it's not supposed to weirdly pull and it seems like it's separated pretty pretty good not too bad i think that's probably pretty good all right so i'm going to quickly now export this to unreal engine mannequin 5 skeleton i'm going to call this robo girl ue5 uh, manny skelly and export now heading over into uh unreal engine i'm going to right click and import to current folder looking for robo girl and i will replace my skeleton my ue5 sk mannequin uh, sk underscore mannequin i'm going to toggle t0's ref pros on <clears throat> and go ahead and import that uh, I now one thing I do need to do is actually fix the texture that imports from Blender. That's quick and easy. You just open up the material that uh, comes with the uh, import, and you grab the texture, and you plug the texture into the base color, and you disconnect the other things. Now, if you wanted to get into PBR and texturing, you would probably leave some of these things in place. But like I say, that is not my specialty. I don't for sure uh, know how to best do that. So I'm just going to use the regular shaded model but there we go there we have our shaded character and let's see how she looks in a bit of lighting now the thing is she's all rigged up and ready to go so i can actually just open up my player character and i can swap this rigged model with my uh, existing player character in the ue5 skeleton and she should just be playable and ready to go that's pretty great pretty easy Let's see, we got Robo Girl here. There she is. I think she looks pretty good, actually. Okay, let's jump her into the game and get the satisfaction of a, of a mission completed. Um, there we go. Let's uh, switch the camera around here. Which one is it? There we go. Switch the camera around, walk into the lighting a bit. It's run mode, jump. I mean, this is 3D generated. Now, the textures, I think... Like I say, are the things that could the thing that could probably use the most improvement. Um, not bad, but uh, again, you wouldn't necessarily want this to be your close-up model. Even it's not too bad. It depends on your kind of game format and art style, I guess. But um, for you know something like a Diablo-like or top-down shooter, or even you know something that doesn't get too close in on those textures, you're going to have probably. Plenty, plenty good enough texturing for what you need. Here's a couple other examples while we're at it. This little robotic character, little goblin character, little optimist robot. You know, there he is. Anyway, hope you guys have enjoyed a look at using Nano Banana for a character concept and uh, then just generating up your character, getting ready to go. Hope you've enjoyed this video and see you in the next one. Oh, and by the way, links to all the tools used in this video in the description below.